Welcome to the Cabin Culture Podcast, where we spend a little more time diving deeper into all the fun parts of cabin culture. We like to think of this as both the material and imagined expressions of how cabin lovers, dwellers, builders, and designers wish to live a more simple and authentic life. This week on the podcast, we're talking to Seth and Aaron, two photographers who specialize in wildlife, the outdoors, and cabins. Some of you may have heard the conversation that we had last year over on their podcast called The Photographer's Mindset. And today we're chatting even more about all the things that photographers and cabin owners have in common and some of the things that we don't. In the days of Instagram as a tool for marketing cabin rentals and for sourcing design inspiration, paint colors, cabin designs, you name it, relationships with great photographers is crucial, but it can also be tricky. Thankfully, Seth and Aaron are here to help us navigate it and understand all the nuances of working together so that everyone wins. Plus, they've got some great tips for cabin owners when it comes to visuals and marketing, so join us for today's conversation. Now, it is time to dive in to photographers versus hosts. Is that what we're calling this? I mean, it was coined by you on our last podcast, Seth. No, my questions are not are not leading in a nasty direction. That would be a lot of work for me to turn this podcast nasty. Yeah. Hey, maybe passion really drives the ratings. Passionate (laughs) fuel talk. But I love the idea that I think it's true. And when I chatted with you all on your podcast, it is really fascinating to dive into this world that is such a common place for photographers and hosts. And yet we're coming at it from two very different angles. And I feel like, as you mentioned, you've talked about it on your podcast with other photographers, and I've talked about it on cabin consultations with other cabin owners. So it feels like time that we just talked about it with everyone. Let's put it all out in the open. So here Let's, we are. Uh, no, no games, no secrets, no one right. side versus uh, well, the other. <laughs> no right or wrong, just different perspectives. No. For for folks who have not listened to the last episode of the podcast or have never heard of your podcast, can you start by introducing yourselves and what brings you to the cabin space? Oh, who's going to go first? Seth, go ahead. I How was going to call. Oh, yeah, it's Janice's show here. Are you going to call was- on us like in, like in class? I mean, I did used to be a teacher and I know how awkward it is when you wait for hands to go up and no one and no one raises them. <laughs> so cold call was my jam. But the I way that a Aaron has written his name just makes me want to say it over and over again. So I was going to call. Him. <laughs> so why don't you That's start fine. us off? A Aaron? What brings us to the cabin space mm-hmm. um, as humans or photographers? I'd love to hear both. Well, as humans, I think it's uh, it, it's everyone's dream. Uh, well, I shouldn't say that, but it's it's a big part of, I think, my dream uh, to be out in nature, uh, connect to nature, be out in the woods. Uh, I can speak for myself and Seth that I think our first love is wildlife and landscape photography. Um, and to get out into that, you usually have to be in the mountains, the woods, near the shore. Um, somewhere that's connected to nature away from the city to be, to be blunt. Um, not that the city is wrong and that offers its own set of niceties for sure. Uh, and culture and what have you, but to get out into nature and, uh, to kind of unplug, if you will, uh, is the human element for cabins. Uh, for me, that's what draws me out. I think the second part to that is where's the photography attraction. I think you host put so much effort into i'm always blown away by like every little detail every little corner every little thought for the guests it's a passion project for most people i think it's like they put so much pride into it versus a hotel room um which i mean again can be very nice but there's like these little pieces of each host or families or what have you that are around that you're like, oh, this is like, this is really quaint. This feels like a, a guest is, uh, uh, host is having me here and wants to show their home and wants to show like this side of them. Uh, and it's fun to capture that as a photographer, to try to go in and be like, oh, I want to, I want to capture and show off these little details that are above and beyond things that surprise you, things that make you go, whoa. I think I said that in our podcast, I try to take a photo of every moment where I go, oh, that's cool, Mm -hmm. you know, and like not skip that over. Um, So I think it's a a, just in a very attractive like anyone anyone that's passionate about something is attractive to me. Mm -hmm. Like I'm attracted to people that are passionate about things. And that really comes out in in some of these cabins. And uh, I think it's fun to capture those 
sort of like, you know, wow, they put in this much time to make this a certain way. Let me capture this in the best light and like mm -hmm. present it in the best light possible in the best moment possible. Uh, and, and try to do, do it justice in that sense. Mm -hmm. So I'll stop there. Mm -hmm. I like that. Seth, what about you? I'll try to do that in half the time as Aaron. I think, you know, just to kind of talk about what Aaron was talking about, a cabin is, it's a step away from noise, right? The hustle bustle of the city, the busyness. I think you can be a product of your environment, right? So when you're in a simple yet intricately designed space, I think it allows you to really become and act who you're kind of supposed to be from more of a primal level. And that's relaxing and that's, that's fun to me. Like Aaron, I'm, I'm passionate about design work, whether it's digital or whether it's, um, you know, architecture. I like looking at things and, and seeing the cleverness behind it and, and realizing that, Hey, a human thought of that. That's, that's pretty cool. Uh, and to Aaron's point, I want to take a picture of that. And, you know, similar to his answer, these cabins are in the woods. They're often built out of log, not all of them, but it just kind of feels like you're where you're supposed to be. And yeah, I'm a wildlife guy too. That's my passion. That's what I love filming. And that's what I love shooting. But I think it's just a chance for people to be forced to reconnect with nature. And that's a good thing. Um, and I think it's something everybody should experience, whether they have a cottage or their own tiny home or they need a rental or something like that. So that's my answer in about maybe a quarter, half the time. I'm not sure. Aaron's a lot more elegant <laughs> with his wording, but. No, I'll go. I'll go sometimes. <laughs> Listen. Don't let me loose. I came from a family where my mom was born in New York and one of my exes commented, he was like, I really think your value system can be summed up in efficiency above all else. And I was like, nice. okay. So the point is, I loved Aaron's answer, but I also truly value efficiency. Okay. I'm going to start with my, my most, the question I'm most interested in asking, and then we're going to go from there, which is at this point, I've had my cabin for like three years and I've had a lot of photographers come through. I knew from the very beginning that Instagram was really important in marketing a cabin, if that's the route you chose to go. And so we just have prioritized that consistently. And I can't help but wonder, I know at the very beginning, I feel like the photographers enjoyed coming in because it hadn't been covered a lot. But I wonder now how photographers feel coming in when they're like, this is an 800 square foot cabin and it's been photographed approximately 17 times. Like, how do I do this different? How do you guys approach that when you go to a cabin that you know has been captured before? You've seen those photos. They're all over the internet. How do you capture it or approach it in a way that feels different and creative and is fun for you? I spend more time looking at the intricacies because I realize, especially if I go to the page and I see that that iconic exterior shot has been taken a million times, mm -hmm. someone like you doesn't, you don't need more of those realistically, right? Maybe I stand three, four feet the opposite direction or my edit makes it look a little bit different. But for the most part, I think it's fair to assume you have a lot of those. So I'm going to try to cut through uh, in, in a different way with more, more detailed shots, maybe that focus on the interior or amenities and things like that. Of course, I'm going to take those, let's for lack of a better term, call them hero shots yeah. uh, from my own portfolio. And I would include that in a deliverable for sure, because maybe there is, like I said, something particular about my style that you enjoy. But I'm going to spend a lot more time, uh, especially on a well-known cabin, you know, doing focusing on the amenities, because maybe those are the things that others overlook, right? Maybe, maybe you didn't even know that photos of that particular thing would look great, right? Mm -hmm. um, I think that can be hard when you're so overwhelmed by the beauty of a of a place when you show up and it's just stunning and you want to take 150,000 photos in that same spot because the clouds move a little bit each second and it's a little bit different. Yeah. But I, I think you got to really detach and pull yourself away from that at times and realize there's a lot more to this place than than what you've seen on your little smartphone. Do you find that it gets yeah. old, Aaron? Have you ever gone to a cabin and been like, "Ugh, I just don't feel creative here because I've already seen a lot of stuff of it. Uh, you can be honest. It's okay. Yeah. Um, it depends on the place, of course. Uh, I try not to. I do a study session, honestly, 
of the cabin and the photos that have come out before about a month before I'm going to go. I get an idea of, you can get an idea of what the host likes, what they post, uh, the styling of the page, what have you. Mm, then I try to hard. ignore it. I try to ignore it for a month. I do not want to go in with, uh, for a musical term, uh, when you're soloing, it's like nothing that yesterday taught me. So when you're fresh and you're improvising, it's kind of like it comes out new. If you're, mm. if you practice the day before, you're going to copy what you did the day before at least in some sort of patterns. Hmm. So nothing that yesterday taught me is, is just a phrase that I think of talking now, but I do look like ahead of time. And then I give myself a break and I try to come in with a narrative. I think that is, makes it fun to answer your question. Like, where do you go if it's been done a thousand times? Uh, Hey, um, here's the idea. I want to come with my son. It's a father son getaway. We're going to roast marshmallows. I'm going to try to capture this story. Uh, that makes it fun no matter where you are, uh, and, and use sort of the backdrop as the, the subject, which is the cabin, but have this narrative going around. Maybe there's a, a holiday you can sort of feature, you know, uh, Memorial day is coming up in a couple months. Uh, let me, I'm going to do this sort of theme. I'm gonna have sparklers and, and what have you, uh, July 4th is coming up, whatever it may be. We're going to do a Thanksgiving dinner in October just to, so you have it for the next holiday that mm -hmm. can make it kind of interesting. Bringing different people can make it kind of interesting, um, and change things around. I love Seth's point of, um, there are tons of, of the hero shots. Uh, I look at those as like, I'm going to get this. And especially I'm going to take an eye on the weather. Is it snowing? Is it a blizzard? Then I'm definitely going to get this hero shot. Is this sunset a 10 out of 10? I'm definitely going to get the one hero shot that she's going to use or he's going to use over all the other ones because this is incredible. This is lucky. Mm -hmm. Is it a cloudy, flat sky? And I'm not going to spend too much time getting that shot when there's a mm -hmm. hundred that are better. Yeah. Um, so I think there, there is sort of this game change pivot. Um, and, and some places are just super photogenic and easy, and some places are tough. New technology sometimes helps to change things up. Like I have a 360 cam. It gives like a really weird view when you walk through a cabin that you don't see a lot. So I'm yeah. going to do, I could do a walkthrough and it looks completely different and like quirky and weird, uh, because it's not really been done a lot or not not everyone has that everyone has an yeah. iPhone or everyone has a camera and they're going to kind of do the same thing. And I think that can be yeah. fun too, where you can take like that hero shot that everyone did with a, basically a 50 mil and it looks perfect and just be like, I want to, I want to just make this look different. Yeah. This is going to be hard to keep my cabin owner hat on and not my videographer <laughs> hat and like nerd out yeah. on tech stuff because I just took a course recently about cinematic production and we're just like constantly studying our art and how we get better at it. And one of the pieces it described lenses and it said, every lens has a personality, yeah. which like, of course I know that every lens is different and I instinctively know what I use certain ones for, but it was like in your creative brief, you need to identify those personalities and why you're choosing that personality to capture this. Right. And I'd never quite thought of it like that. And you just said quirky. And that's how I think about wide angle lenses. So they're a bit quirky, right? Mm -hmm. The fisheye aspect, mm -hmm. it's not quite true to life, but it gives you a perspective you don't normally get. And same with the 360 cam. It just has a different personality that serves a different purpose. And that probably makes it more fun to, to play with. Yeah. I, I think that's, I never thought of it that way either, but I think that's very true. I mean, yeah, yeah. everything has different personalities and and even music and video, like how important is music and mm. and sound design to to what you're trying to convey? Um, the speed of your walkthrough, like it, yep. it could be super like just chill and artistic, or you can like make it make it move and have it be fun. Um, yeah. So there's just so many choices to try to make things different, even though people have been in there hundreds of times trying to do the same thing. Yeah. Okay. I want to start by having you all walk me through what a typical cabin shoot looks like. Because I think this is where some misconceptions between photographers and cabin owners might start is I think cabin owners, and I thought this until I captured my first couple cabins, but I was like, free cabin stays. What a gift. They get to like hang out in the woods. And and then I I did a couple and I was like, oh, this is different. But I want you to talk me through what does your stay start to finish look like? 
I know how both of my are mine and Aaron starts and it's as soon as you get there, you shoot because everything is clean and immaculate and it's never going to be that way again. Once you walk through it once, <laughs> yeah. especially if there's more than one of you, mm -hmm. right? That is yeah. the very first thing you do is your walk through and your standard room shots, et cetera, yeah. Can et cetera. I ask a question about that? Sure. Because most of us are like, okay, our check-in time is at three or four, so you can come then. Is that problematic for you though? Because you come in the winter at four o'clock and the sun's down. You don't have good light for that crucial time when you want to get that walk through. Yes. Good point. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> it, it's it's just needed to know. It's a need to know basis and, and an understanding. And you learn these things, Seth. I'm not going to interrupt you with a long winded thing. I promise. Uh, but no, you go just, for it, man. You go for it. You you just need to know. Hey, um, check-ins at three, we have someone the day before we need the clean, like this is what it is. And you go like, okay, well, sunsets at four, we're going to get there at three. We're going to do our best, but that's one less sunset. Basically. I can't yeah. count. I can't tell you, I promise you Friday, Saturday, or like through two days, there two sunsets that are going to happen right over the balcony of your, of your place, because I'm, I'm getting in there with like an hour to go just so you understand, maybe we get lucky, maybe it's fine. But I think it's just a communication is so, so important in terms of, uh, the relationship and understanding your deliverables and what it really takes and not, yeah. not over promising. That's not going to help if you're, if you're just promising everything and, and you're not thinking about the timing, the sunset, the sunrise, where it is. So I'll, yeah. I'll just throw that in there. Seth, uh, Seth's points right on too. like, let's clean, let's do it yeah. while it's clean. And I, I feel do the like same thing as yeah. a host <laughs> when I show up every time I'm like, I gotta get my content now. Yeah. I feel like after that stint as well, that's when you put the camera down and dig into the space and just kind of walk around and get acquainted and make it, make it feel like home. I think the more you can make it feel and believe that you're at home, the more relaxed you are, I think the better product you're going to be able to deliver personally. I know Aaron has this, this great little ritual of not staying mm -hmm. in the master bedroom. What's that about? It's a good question. Um, after I said that last time, I recognized that the last cabin I stayed at, I stayed in the master bedroom, but there were like three identical bedrooms. So I didn't really recognize it. But uh, I, to your point, I like to keep it really pristine, like really clean. I personally, if I had a choice, if there was a one, two and a three bedroom, one being the best, like the number one bedroom, I'm a hundred percent staying in the third bedroom, like the mm. most unphotogenic bedroom i will destroy with my <laughs> camera equipment my clothing my wardrobe like whatever props we need guitar who like who knows whatever it is uh like that's all going in there because i know the the host and myself can can forego bedroom number three you know i don't need 10 photos of bedroom number three like we get it we get that there's you got a couple when you first got there yeah. you're good yeah so yeah so that's that and and if i'm gonna stage like cool moments and the master bedroom's really special i want that to be ready at all times not like hold on how did they make the bed oh like i i'm a guy i can't make the bed well i can't <laughs> i just can't do it so uh we're, we're in trouble here we slept in it one night you know so uh, that's, I just try to keep the, the nice areas as clean as possible. Okay. So you check in to the least desirable bedroom. Do. do you import any photos that night? Like, do you start editing while you're there or is it just shooting when you're, uh, when Aaron you're does. I don't. Y yeah. Um, I, I mean, to, to just add to your last question, the shoot for me, and I know Seth, he didn't say this, but it's true. Um, like I have a cabin shoot this weekend, this shoot started full-time brain power. I, I don't know this week. I'm constantly thinking about the timing of things and you you've shot your cabin, Seth, we've shot cabins, like the mental grind to balance time with content, with positioning with the sun, with the Milky Way, with sunrise, with uh, breakfast that's being made, with cleanup, with like that mental grind balancing. And maybe it's a me thing, but it is exhausting and it's constant. So for me, it starts very early with like a note list of what are the shots I know I want to get. I know I'm going to be surprised and weather's going to be a thing and what have you. But 
it starts with a lot of planning way before I even set foot on the property or start driving towards the property Mm -hmm. in terms of let me get this as organized as possible uh, in a list sort of format where I can just check off, oh, I got that shot that I wanted. I, I completed that narrative that I wanted. Oh, this was extra. That helps to keep the flow going when you're there because I do know if you just go in blind, it's it's chickens with your head off, like running around. Uh, now the kitchen's messed up and the light's perfect here and we got to clean this fast. We have four minutes, the light's moving. Like it, it gets crazy and it's a nonstop thing uh, while you're going. So that's that's a before even, but that's where it starts for for me, I can say for sure. I feel like this is a misconception or like a struggle for cabin hosts is that I think I think we know there are people like you out there, right? Like I think I know there are there's a spectrum of photographers all the way to UGC creators who, you know, and then everyone's kind of in the middle. But I think we struggle to know via DMs or even just looking at someone's profile, which they are. Mm -hmm. And I hear this a lot of like, how do I determine if someone is worth a free stay, which feels like a lot, or is worth payment, which feels like an extra lot? Because we have lots of people who are saying we'll do it for a free stay. But at the same time, we want good content. And we know a lot of people know we have to pay for that. Do you have any advice on how cabin owners can figure out via DMs or profiles where on the spectrum a creator falls? I think, I think vagueness can often be a red flag. Hmm. I'm not going to say all the time because that's unfair, but Hey, I'd like to do, I'd like to shoot your cabin sometime. Maybe, (laughs) you know, or just vague words. I feel like do not demonstrate professionalism, whereas coming in, describing how you discovered their cabin, what exactly you want to do, when you're available, are you free to schedule a conversation, etc. I think just demonstrates you have a professional that you're dealing with, or you have someone who at least takes it seriously, if they're even even if they're a hobbyist, right? Uh, I, I would say beware yeah. of vague terms and vague plans and ambiguity. I think a quick green flag would be someone that's taken the time to make a very attractive website. You know, if, if they're, if they have a website that's dedicated to Airbnb or cabin shooting, uh, as something they do, they've done it before and they put in the time, which isn't, I mean, it's not the easiest thing to make a website and make it look nice, but to put in a website that has their packaging that has like these are my deliverables. This is what I typically do. I've done this before. It's not my first Rodeo. Uh, I think that is a quick green flag versus just looking at their, you know, uh, Instagram and being like taking a gamble on this person. I don't really know, which I get would be, could potentially burn you. I mean, just very easily because ultimately we're kind of all strangers going into this transaction. Uh, and there's a lot of trust both ways in terms of, it all, it all going down smoothly. Um, and there's a lot of variables, uh, included as well. So I think that shows like, Hey, they've been through this before. They're, they're okay. If it, if it rains for a day, they're not going to freak out. They, they have Mm. a, they have a flow. They have like, um, uh, uh, you can tell they've just done it before they've been here before. Mm -hmm. So question on that front, I think to Aaron's point too, testimonials are worth their weight in gold. Even if they're not from another cabin, just someone who can vouch for your quality of work and your professionalism is so important. Yeah, that's a really good point. And I will say amongst cabin owners, that's the number one way I find new photographers is just if someone recommends someone, if I see something on their page that I like, and then I'll reach out to them and be like, what was it like working with them? And same thing, just the other day, I had a a, a newer content creator who had pitched me and I said yes, because we had space. And she was so professional. And I got a lot of messages that were like, hey, what was your experience like? And I, you know, I had really good things to say because she was great. And then one by one, I'm seeing all of my friends use her like in a row. And so it just went to show me how much word of mouth really makes a difference. But to your point, Aaron, you were saying there's a lot of trust on either side. I know from the host side, the fear is always like, will they take good care of my space? And will I get the value of the stay? What are the trust issues with cabin owners? On the other like, end? Like, what are the... Yep. 
Yeah. What's from your perspective, where are the areas where trust matters a lot as a photographer? I, I have this answer. Uh, I haven't had any experiences, but just from talking, but I, I can imagine, uh, again, really, really concrete plans and deliverables. Like uh, sometimes I'm driving f this weekend, I'm driving four hours to a cabin. Um, if it's not ready or like there's, there's sort of a miscommunication with like, um, the cleaners are at this time, they should be done. Uh, here's the coat, like any of that stuff really can ruffle your feathers in terms of like, just add anxiety and pressure. And again, I'm planning the whole week beyond, uh, of like, okay, I'm, I'm there. I have an hour before sunset. Like my gear is ready to go in the car. Oftentimes, like I I'm from four hours away. I'm like, what will I need? I'll need my tripod, this lens and that I'm pulling in and, and shooting. Um, so if, if things get off hitch right away, it's tough. Um, it just adds a, a layer to it. Of mm -hmm. course, like agreements on, on, on payment and that that's the obvious. If like there's issues after the fact, or, um, we want, we said we wanted this amount of photos or we are not happy or whatever, like hopefully that that kind of conversation doesn't happen but there is trust that like hey i'm gonna deliver i'm gonna spend my weekend going you know up there and and you've seen my work you want it uh hopefully it's not a problem as we exchange where it's like we're trusting each other here both ways like yeah. you're trusting i'm gonna go up and respect your place i'm trusting you're gonna respect my work and we're gonna all you know shake hands at the end and be happy so I, I think those are the obvious ones. Um, I, I don't know what, what goes a long way, I think is to, uh, appreciation both ways from the photographer to be like, I to, to appreciate the space, let them know, like this corner was amazing. I love this drawer of chargers. I think I mentioned that on, on our you show. Did. Uh, I, I, I love that you left us a bottle of wine with a thank you like above and beyond. We left it for the next guest with a nice note. Like those are things that have happened um, where it's just like it, it pays it all forward and it makes it super enjoyable to be there and be working with each other versus for each other. And I think yeah. I think that makes a, a huge difference in terms of like those little things versus a little bit of a, a cold feeling like, all right, we're unlocking the door for you. Like, let us know when you're done. Like, yeah. Okay. I'll still do a great job, but that, that intrinsic motivation to be like, wow, they're, they're happy. I'm here. That feels great. Yeah. And makes me go above and beyond to, I, I said, I said, we're going to do, you know, 20, 30 pictures. I'm going to send them all hundred that I have. Like yeah. it, it, it just, yeah. it just changes the the whole vibe of it. We become friends. You honestly do yeah. with a lot of these cabins. Yeah. And then it gets weird when you're like, let's talk business or they want another shoot, but, <laughs> but it's, it's cause we're so close at that point. Like we we've shared an experience and it's, it is kind of yeah. nice for sure. I'm starting to feel that way about some of my repeat guests where I feel almost guilty about charging yeah. them because they've been there and I feel like I'm friends with them. And then I'm like, wait, but like, mm -hmm. yeah. So that's a good outcome, I think, of a of a positive relationship. For sure. What part of your work as photographers do you think is the most misunderstood by cabin owners? That is a great question. I don't know if necessarily by cabin owners. I think in general, there just just with people in general who aren't photographers, I think there can be this tendency to not put very much value on an intangible digital product especially everyone carrying iPhones around in their pockets. Like everyone can technically take a picture. I think mm -hmm. there's, I think it can be very difficult to communicate to non photographers that this is a skill that's taken a lot of time, a lot of money, a lot of learning, just like anything else. I think that's very difficult to get across at times. And I think that's one of it should be one of our goals as as a community of photographers and as individuals is to figure out how to make that make sense to as many people as possible. So I don't I didn't really answer your question. Maybe I posed another problem. <laughs> but that's that's sort of where my head is at with it. Yeah, Seth, I mean to to add to that, I think I have two examples. One I just did some work for a restaurant and they wanted to um 
promote their smash burgers. And I didn't go in and I mean, it's a, it's a burger. How many shots can you possibly get? But what I, but I went in and I, I came in with an idea and I just did this layered shot of every ingredient that I kind of held in the air and, and then Photoshopped and made this layered burger of all their ingredients. That one photo probably in, in totality took me an hour, about two and a half hours to create. Yeah, I can imagine. So you hand it over and they're like, oh, cool. And you almost want to strangle them, even though they like it. <laughs> because that's where you have to put the ego aside where you're like, do you know what I did to make this? Like, do you? Know that what reaction I mean? is not proportional to the amount of work I put into this. Right, right, <laughs> right. So, but that's somewhat, that's somewhat us as an artist having to understand like what it is. It, it You are delivering a photo. It's super cool, but it is going to be utilized in probably a 24 hour time period and, and moved on to the next burger, the next thing that they're doing. Um, I remember this was my own project I wanted to do. Uh, there was this cabin that had a beautiful deck, like this open deck and uh I, I play music and it reminded me of a stage like i was like how cool would it be to have like a a band on this deck and i set up i brought all guitar stuff like a microphone and amp everything and set up this one photo of like a guitarist with a hat like a very country sort of look uh and it took forever. It took like a very long time and while i was setting up and putting on my wardrobe and and trying to get this vibe going <laughs> I was like, I have so many photos to do and I'm doing this like concept that I wanted to do for myself. I think it'll be a very cool photo, but no one's going to understand like what I just went what through it took. to yeah. plug in the amp. So the orange lights on and like, like all the stuff that, that goes on. So I think there's those moments where it's like, you, you can put in a lot for a narrative or if you have an idea, if you do a walkthrough with people like, Hey, I want you to be drinking coffee at this moment. And then when I scan by, I want you to run around and be at the couch. So when I circle around, you're there and then I'm going upstairs, but I want you to beat me upstairs so that I can see you reading at the nook. Like we, we go crazy sometimes trying to accomplish these looks that at the end of the day are on a reel or on a, a page for 24 hours getting likes. And then it's, then it's buried. So there is a lot yeah. of pride that goes into it. And maybe that's our fault for not understanding, like, this is the medium, like, let's get, let's get a lot of stuff, some content versus putting our heart and soul into like these little things. But I think, yeah. I think that's where it's, where you go into it and you're like, I'm, I'm really trying here to, to create an amazing and different and unique thing than any other photographer is going to come in and get that's the mentality going in there and you do and you try and you're exhausted and you just hope it's i mean appreciation is probably more than money to be honest if if i yeah. get an email back that's like holy crap i can't believe you guys did this or pulled this off i think that feels better than a quick payment honestly yeah Cause it's like, oh, thank yeah. God! Like they, they see it. They see, they see my, my art. <laughs> it makes you cry. It does. Yeah. It feels good. But creative work is so personal. Mm -hmm. Like I remember one friend we did. I used to work at a creative co-working space, and we did a, um, hmm. what was it called? Like a, a shitty art show. Mm -hmm. Uh, it was like it was basically encouraging all of the creatives to do something that was outside of their art form. So like basically, let's acknowledge it's all going to be shitty, but let's do it to acknowledge that the half mm -hmm. of the work is actually the creativity that goes into it. But once you put all that work in, like you do need it. It is like I don't know. It is part of you. Mm -hmm. Um, and someone laughed and said, like, you don't know my art of just and which really I think about that all the time. If I feel like someone doesn't get it, I'm like, you don't know my art, which is both like funny, but also liberating of like, actually, this isn't about everyone else recognizing it. It's OK. It's just about like what I want to create. But I think this leads me to a big area of trust with cabin owners that you did not bring up. But I do think we should talk about. And that is copyright. And this idea that I think photographers um, put a lot of trust into cabin owners mm -hmm. that we will understand that concept. And especially in this format where it disappears so quickly and word of mouth and, and growth is a lot of it. When cabin owners don't tag their photos with the photographers, don't make it 
obvious who took that photo and whose art it is. And I think, I think I work in this space, so I understand this. I think it's just an education gap, but I don't know. So let's talk a little bit about that so that cabin owners listening can understand why that's so important and why you can't take those photos and just reuse them anywhere or other people can't take it and reuse them. Can you share a little bit about that? And this, just because this age of social media has made it really tricky. Yeah, that's a, that's a great point to bring up. Um, I've never been that I know of, I should say, I've never been burned by that uh, mm. as, as of now with in, in the cabin industry. People seem to know the rules of that game, I should say, um, seemingly. And however, though, I do think it's very important uh, any shooters out there to understand that 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 is part of the the whole game and the the contracting and the talking about it the pre talking is it's important to mention that you would like to be tagged uh, if I'm doing a product shoot for a company and they're buying my photos they're licensing them I don't it's it's weird to be like hey Nike uh, on that commercial that Jordan commercial can you just put my name at the bottom. Like they're not going to, they're buying the, yeah. they're buying the, and they're buying the right. They don't have to. Right. Yeah. They're buying the rights. So I, I, I think that's, that's part of it. Third party use is a whole nother thing because. But most cabin owners are not buying the rights to it. Right. Correct. Right. I've never been asked to buy the rights. So right. that's right. where it gets tricky. Right. That's where we should be going as photographers is maybe talking licensing. I'll license these to you and you can do whatever you want with them. Yeah. And you exactly. forego your credit potentially. Mm -hmm. Yep. Right. If you buy the license, you don't have to credit anyone because you have the license to use that photo. I think in my experience, one of our photos that was taken by Dirt and Glass, our builder, without asking, not my cousin who worked there, but the company, um, took it and put it into a full page ad in Main Homes. Mm. And I immediately messaged the photographer and said like, hey, did they license this? And they were like, they asked about prices and then never did and went ahead and put it in the magazine. So for anyone who's confused, that is not okay. Not okay. They, they did it. They're using it for marketing right. where they would have had to hire a photographer to get a good photo to put in an ad rather than do that. They took one of our photos, did not pay the photographer. And that is a totally different price point. If you are a business with a marketing budget publishing in magazines, that is, you have to buy the license to do that. You can't just get it for free from the cabin owner or whatever. So that's what I see a decent amount of, let alone repost accounts who are just not crediting, but also yeah. using that in future ads. Or if Dwell says, we want to do an article on your cabin, do you have any photos you can share? That's not your, mm -hmm. you don't get to answer that question. That's up to the photographers if they are willing to either sell a license or allow it to be used for that. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. It's great that you're bringing this up. It, it is. It's important, I think, to to understand. Um, I I I've had the privilege, I guess, to work with cabins that have so far been very upfront. Like one of the builders of an A-frame, uh, so it's not the cabin host, wanted to make a calendar of all their A-frames for the year, um, and went through the hosts. Like, can I have those pictures? And the host was great, kind of connected us on email. We had a conversation and, and that was that. But at, at least the wherewithal was there. Um, yeah. So if you don't know, though, like I don't, it's complicated. So I don't blame hosts for like not quite knowing and wanting, oh, cool. This this cabin porn book wants to publish our cabin. Yeah, let's give them our best photos that we have. And um nothing against cabin porn i don't know if they would do that they probably know the rules right. but there are plenty of books yes, who do that yes yeah and then and then they make money like this is yeah. where people get confused they're like well why can't they use that and the reason is because they're then printing this book and selling it and making money off of it right but right. they didn't have to go out and photograph any of them so there was no time or pay photographers to do it and they're profiting off of the work of the photographers just for anyone mm -hmm. who like gets confused mm -hmm. by that because i do think it is confusing but you have to think through the whole. And if you're creative, you're creating that art. It belongs to you by default, unless someone right. buys it from you. Right. That's the thing that I think people can forget is that just because your building is in the photograph doesn't mean you own the photograph, despite right. being gifted it for social media, unless you've licensed it, unless you have a separate licensing agreement that allows third party. 
Mm -hmm. And then you're allowed to do that. I don't think, I think 99% of photographers aren't doing that. Maybe right. we should be. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think it's tricky yeah. in this field. This is where I have a different perspective as a cabin owner because perspective of just like, it wouldn't be affordable to do it. We mm -hmm. just wouldn't, we wouldn't be able to do it to, to give up the stay, pay for the, the photography. And then I, cause I just, cause I've seen licensing rates for the work I do commercially. Right. And there's no way I could make those numbers work for a cabin, but it, I'm willing to forego the license if it's okay for me to just use it on my social media and maybe my website. But if we're clear that that's what I'm using it for and any other requests I'm sending to the photographer, like I'm cool passing that up. And, and, and perhaps that's our fault. We need to assume maybe that our, our Airbnb or our cabin owner doesn't understand the rules. I mean, if you just, and I don't think most do, I right. really don't. And if we're so, if, if we're so well-versed in an area, right. We just, we, I think we naturally begin to assume that others are as well. It's this weird mm -hmm. brain dichotomy mm -hmm. and yeah. some people just don't know and often it's harmless. And so I yeah. think it falls back to the concept of my fault, like taking ownership for, for something yeah. and, and covering your bases. Right. Yeah. How do you feel on this note when cabin owners try and negotiate? Like if you give them a price and they come back with some sort of negotiation, is that a no-go? Will that be like an immediate deal breaker for you? Or is it okay for folks to be like, oh, you know, I've done one for this. What do you think about this? I mean, you have every right to walk right, walk away, right? You, yeah. you know, I think that's just fair business negotiation. If it, it comes down to uh, you both have the right to accept or deny each other's terms. I mean, you don't have to like it, but this is business, right? And if you can't stomach that, maybe you're not in the right uh, right profession. Yeah. Yeah. And it's yeah. it's supply and demand, uh, and and that's right. that's on our side. What what we fight for with photographers is making sure you understand and and photography or um, Airbnb hosts understand depending on the photographer and, and the work ethic, but it is a lot of work. It, it, it just is like a two day stay and in, in your 50 deliverables, you are flying like there. It's exhausting. I am, I'm gearing up for this weekend's stay knowing I will be home late Sunday night and have to go straight to my work week. And it will take days to yeah. mentally catch up and that's fine. That's part of it. But then there becomes to answer your question, it just becomes a price where that's not quite worth it. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and that's yeah. fine. Like he, here's the price to make it worth it for me to do this and deliver stuff fast. I, I pride myself on that. Like I'm usually done and delivered by Sunday night when I get home, like here's your deliverables. I might have to edit a few more reels if I'm getting fancy with them, but all the photos are done. Like, yeah, uh, that's impressive. I am done. I, I pat myself on the back because I it's more for me. It's selfish. Like, I don't I can't have this on my plate anymore. Like, yeah. I have to get it done. I'm going to I'm going to grind this weekend. It's going to be done. Uh, but yeah. there there just becomes a price where it's like no hard feelings. Like if if your budget's, you know, if your budget's 500 and, and my minimum's a thousand to make this trip, this specific trip, like uh, it's just not going to work. I think it goes both ways as well because the hosts are prepping the place and getting cleaners and making sure everything is just perfect for the shoot. So I think that speaks to having a good negotiation or understanding comes down to, I think, displaying empathy both ways. Mm -hmm. Hey, I know that as a creator, you're going to be running around. This is a lot of work. It's not you just clicking a button and also the photographer going like, hey, I know that... Uh, you're giving up a, a you're giving up revenue to have me stay there, and I understand that, and I know it's a lot of work. I feel like if you begin a negotiation or a conversation like that, I think you're more likely to have a positive outcome, both from a negotiation standpoint and just an overall relationship. When you when you display, you know, empathetic behaviors right off the bat, understanding each side. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I've really adjusted my own thoughts on it since photographing a couple cabins. And I realized, and one of them, I had friends come and I got there a day early to do the photos and all that, and then had friends there, but this was a complete trade. I was not being paid. So I didn't feel guilty. Once my friends came, we enjoyed time and I delivered plenty of photos and everything I promised. But now when I think about someone who's coming for a trade, I, 
I can't expect and don't want them to work the whole time. I like my expectations for what they deliver are lower. If they want to bring friends or a friend, like, cool. I want you to enjoy because I'm not paying you. So that is the payment. If I'm paying someone, my expectation is different. If you bring a bunch of friends, then I'm kind of like, well, my expectation is that you're working most of it because I'm paying you for it. But to your point, right. Aaron, you know, if you're working all week and then you're doing that too, that's a lot. But you, I mean, yeah. and you are getting paid for it. So that helps, you know, that number has to be what makes it worth it for you. But with free stays, when I do that, I have definitely lowered my bar and I try to be really cautious of not expecting the same thing that I would from a paid visit because I do want you to have some downtime and enjoy it. I mean, we have some friends that are starting off trying to shoot Airbnbs and uh, like very little portfolio and want to build stuff. Some, I mean, this is, this is over the top, but to build a portfolio, people right off the bat are looking for potentially a free stay and, 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 and that may work and that may be good. Um, I even suggest like paying for the place, paying for paying. If you can pay for the, the place that you want to be in your portfolio, right? Go stay mm. there where there's no pressure to deliver or do anything. You can stay there for a night or two and get as many photos as possible. Gift them to the host as a thank you. Mm -hmm. Have them in your portfolio. They're going to speak very highly of you if they if they're they're feeling, "Whoa, this person paid to stay here and then like crushed it with photos." Like mm -hmm. I I owe them one. I owe them one and and then you have this portfolio. Maybe you get a paid gig because of it. Maybe like that starts. Um, I think that's an avenue too that people are afraid to potentially do. They go straight to like, let's let's trade this straight up or let's, I want a free stay for this many photos. I think that that adds just a lot of pressure for a new photographer, I think, to like, yeah what's the balance like they don't they don't know what's the expectations like there has to be right. a lot of communication am i getting taken advantage of like it's tough i think if you pay for the stay it takes a lot of the pressure off as a photographer to this is a beginning photographer to get your portfolio going gift them maybe they hook you up down the line maybe they have a friend that's like well, hey check out this person they're new they're probably not as expensive as everyone but look at the portfolio i got like it's yeah. incredible so there's yeah. there are avenues. It's it is business. It is you're marketing yourself. You're advertising for yourself. Like you're trying to get in there and get a foot in the door. And I think there's a lot of different ways to do it without being taken advantage of or trying to take advantage of a situation. How do you measure your success when you photograph a place in terms of how you've helped to support their marketability? Do you pay attention to that? Do you think about that? How do you measure that? For me, it's an easy answer. If it ends up on your pages, you're happy with what you received. And if you're happy, I did a good job. You so know, do if, you pay attention to like how many of your photos from a stay they use to know like if they were happy with it or how happy they were? Or is all it just clients, like all clients, even not not even necessarily cabin ones, just commercial work. Did they use the photos? Mm -hmm. No? What why not? Mm -hmm. Now yeah. you need to be careful with that. This is not necessarily um, related to cabin photography, but let's say you do work for a brand and you don't see any of the shots on their socials. They could be running back end ads, mm -hmm. right? Sometimes yeah. you just don't know. I think one clear cut way to get feedbacks to ask for it. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're dealing with a professional mm -hmm. person, they'll let you know. I think when you offer clear, concise, constructive feedback, whether it's positive or negative, you help that other person out a lot from not making the same mistake again. Yeah. I've never given feedback to a photographer because no one's ever asked. So that's really interesting. Yeah, I ask all I think, the time for I think, feedback. Seth, I think that's right on. Yeah, that's interesting because I have thoughts on every set of photos that I've been delivered, especially after a month or two. I have thoughts on what I ended up using, what I didn't end up using. I mean, I've been happy with almost all of them. I don't have any complaints. But if you asked me for feedback, I'd probably have thoughts on like, oh, these were great. These I ended up not using. Here's why. Like, you know, we all have thoughts, especially if you're active on social media, because you're making choices every single day. Which mm -hmm. photos am I using? Which ones am I not? I think that's a key point too. Uh, the the knowledge of social media and Instagram is a whole different story than are photos good and is someone happy with the content? I have a question for you about that, Aaron, because I have that written down under marketing. Like we have that in common that we're both marketing our businesses via a very visual platform. Layla, stop. 
I don't know if you can see her in the background. I she is. A minute, and then I heard her. She just got sponsorship. Her very first. She has an Instagram account now, Ooh. and she just got her very first haul of clothes, and she is wearing a tracksuit <laughs> that I would yeah. never have bought for her otherwise. But it's fucking hilarious. It's amazing. I just can't. And it keeps falling down, so her fur is like poking out of here, as if she's like some Jersey like bro yeah. who should have like a gold chain on or something. She's if you're not watching this on YouTube, you should be. <laughs> she's an she's very. She's very upset by the puppies that she clearly can tell her in the house. Okay. We're both using Instagram to market our work. Mm -hmm. What do you have to teach cabin owners about Instagram? Like what could we learn from you? Oh, so much. I think. Great. Tell me some. The photographers and the artists that I like have a very stylized page. There's a, there's a theme to it. It's all connected. The kitchen flows to the living room, to the bedrooms, like that it, it's not Miami decor in the, in the living room and then uh you know contemporary kitchen here and then the deck has like this weird like vi it's like it's not all over the place um and i i think that's important i think there's probably a struggle to potentially find um like what is our voice as a as a host like what is our voice is it just the cabin do i want to be a personality do i want to be the face of the company does my family want to be do my guests want to be is it a bunch of beautiful models like what what vibe do we want to give off and there's endless options so i think it's hard to pin down what is our mark? What are, what's our brand colors? What's our fonts? What's our, like that kind of thinking I think can go just over a lot of people's heads and they start just posting. Here's a professional set, three photos in a row that are amazing. And then here's 10 of my daughter's iPhone. No offense to anyone's daughter's iPhone, but just, it's a different look. It's like, it doesn't even make sense. So I think that is something that takes probably self-discipline to be like, okay, I'm either going to make this pretty casual or I'm going to make this really professional. Uh, I'm only going to do professional photography and video. That's, that's what I'm going to just stick to, or I'm going to learn myself to match up to at least be close to, to what I'm seeing here. I think that's a thing. Uh, some of the basics like hashtags or tagging. Um, Wait, can we, can we stop? That first part was just gold. I want to move no. on to the other stuff and we will, but that is like, I have tried to articulate that in cabin consultations and I, I don't know that I've ever done it as well as you did. And I just went through a big brand strategy session with my social media manager who does our like ad partnerships, not our content. Mm -hmm. Anyway, Arrive Social Co., their name is Yaz. They're amazing. But they did all of that with me. Now, I had done a lot of that work, but they looked at it from an outside lens mm -hmm. and could do that for anyone who wanted. Fonts, colors, how do we make this consistent? How do we think about your strategy? What do you want your grid to look like? And a lot of that I had done from like a gut feel, but the amount of grids that I see that don't have that cohesion. And I love that you said there's so many ways to do this because I think people think there's only one way in the cabin world and you just nailed like four of them that are different from one mm -hmm. another and have very different feels. Y yeah, absolutely. And I think for photographers that are out there, they'll look at their, look at their page. If it is very succinct, if it is pretty like, oh, they have a style that they stick to, uh, they probably have a sort of sense of detail, a sense of art that they are able to, that you're able to tap into. That is a potential service that I think photographers forget. And I've done it many, I shouldn't say many times, but I've offered it many times where you hand over I'm really proud of a folder, hand over a folder and a photo gets used here. And then it's a bunch of like whatever stuff. And then you can, you can offer or say, Hey, um, just so you know, like I could help a little bit potentially if you're looking for it, social media takes a lot of time. I totally understand that. Uh, but here's what I could promise you. You I've seen, you've had five photographers, professional photographers in the last six months. I I'm not seeing a lot of those photos. So I know you have them. What if you gave me a little bit of control to set up a posting schedule for you? 
I'm going to pick 60 of my favorite photos and I'm going to give you a post to post every two days where now that your feed will look like this and you can make a mock-up of those square little tiles and say like, look at this feed compared to Cozy Rock Cabin, compared to Warner's Camp, where it's very succinct in terms of their styling and professionality. And you can offer... That's just an example, but offer that service as well. Yes. If someone's willing to be like, oh, and people have said like, oh my God, that's not in my budget right now. But as soon as it is, I am doing it because I cannot stand the social media aspect of it. And, and that's, it's, like, it's just solving problems. That's what you're mm -hmm. doing. It's not selling yourself. It's just solving real problems that cabin owners have. And when you know, like for, for me, it'd be like, if if you pay attention, they've had they've had great photographers. I know these photographers; they're great. So I yep. know they have folders of endless content somewhere. God knows. Like, let me get my hands on those. And I could, I could, I could just blast this really nicely, so they don't have to worry about it, and they'll just see like likes, 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 maybe a little bit of following, growing, growing, growing. And at, at the very least, when someone's like, "Oh, this cabin looks nice," and they go to the page it looks really, really tight. And I, I think that is key. When someone lands on the page, you don't want them to go like, what's going on here? Like, yeah. I don't, I don't get it. I'm not, I don't know. This doesn't back to the, does a photographer have a website that's professionally done? Like yep. vice versa. Does a guest go to a, a, a host page or a cabin's page and go like, I don't know. This doesn't, this doesn't look together. Or I'm in good hands immediately right, because right. it's subconscious. It's like when you mm -hmm. tour a house and you're thinking about buying it. If there's something over here that doesn't look good, it might be a small thing. And the owner's like, well, it's not structural. Like, who cares? But that thought has entered your mind of like, well, if that's wrong, what's happening behind the drywall here? Right. Yeah. And so that's I cool. do think that's what I always say is like, Getting people to find you is one of the challenges of social media, right? And like reels can help with that and hashtags can help with that and you can get in front of more eyes. But these days we're pickier about the follow. And so they can find you all they want, but they're not just going to click follow anymore. They're going to click on your profile and take one quick look at it. In like two seconds, they're going to make a decision. Am I leaving or am I following? Mm -hmm. And you have like two seconds for your grid and your highlights and your profile image and your description to get them to follow. And are you are you capitalizing on that, or are you wasting the opportunity? That's great. And you, and as, assuming you're paying for professional photography and not using it, like that's a travesty. <laughs> like, right. You, you gotta. You gotta. Right. You, what, like, what are you, what are you paying for? I, right. I, you know, you have to use it, and I would use it as much as possible over and over and over and over and over again. Yeah, so Seth. Do you have anything to add to that? What do you, what do you have to teach cabin owners from the social media side? Well, I think just to talk more about that point is essentially you're paying for attention. You know, we hear the attention economy, right? When I land on your grid, is it so beautifully designed that I spend more time on it? Mm -hmm. a, a grid that's all over the place, I'm out of there in two seconds. Just like if you go to my website that's poorly designed, you're out of there in two seconds because it's frustrating. You don't get it. If I'm on a page with beautifully curated aspects of the cabin, interiors, exteriors, amenities, I want, I'm, I'm just curious and I, I, I naturally keep scrolling that ups your engagement. You're on the Explorer page now. I think that's, I think that's an important thing to get across is that in terms of social media and when you pay for a professional, you're paying them to create content that gets attention. That's the currency, attention. Yep. hundred percent. Uh, Janice, let's, I want to ask you. Now, Seth and I just had talked about that things become oversaturated. Um, I've been on social media for under five years, and I, I just remember in the beginning, you see a, a bear photo and you're like, oh, who saw a bear? Like, that's unbelievable. <laughs> and now I can't I can't go to sleep without seeing, you know, 500 amazing bear photos. And it it is if i'm being super honest as a cabin photographer it gets like a you have to be super creative but it gets a little like oh like that person's great and they're they're younger and prettier than me like oh okay they're they're nailing it like you you see so many and it's it's things that i like and things that i post and shoot so the algorithm keeps showing me a lot of yep. cabin stuff but it me gets too. a little it can get a little discouraging where you're 
like for the attention seeking part, like Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to this cabin, I'm getting paid. Like, how do I, how do I change the, how do I move the needle at all? Hmm. Do I have to be hilarious for a real? Like, do I have to have to do something crazy? Do I have to light myself on fire and and run through the driveway to get attention? Like, what what is the deal these days no. to hand over a package and, and the person's excited with the photos and and they post a photo and it gets ten likes and it 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 is a gut punch based on not your work ethic, not how well the photos came out, not how happy the host is. It's just like this was the point of this to to do really well and. It's, it's, it is a tougher, more saturated thing that people don't get super excited about anymore because it's like, eh, I've seen this 5,000 yeah. times away. That's why I feel like hosts have to, uh, and this is my perspective, but hosts have to put more of their personality into it because the beauty of Airbnb is that there is a human behind it. Like when Airbnb first started, that's like what it came down to is this human is sharing their place, their space, their life with you. And yet on Instagram, and that's why most hosts that I talk to, that's why most of them host and they're really good at that. And yet it doesn't translate over to social media. They want to keep themselves out of the out of the frame, out of the pictures, off Insta stories. And the only place they express themselves is in the caption. And even then, a lot of them are just, you know, a couple of sentences with some hashtags. And I feel like the accounts that I don't actually know if this is true, so I don't want to say that. But that's what I'm craving. I'm craving more of the hosts. I'm craving more of the humans who are giving me that experience, what makes it different. And I think when it comes to the photography, it's like, I just view it as such a long game. I don't put that kind of pressure on any one photographer who comes to my cabin. Good to hear. You know what I mean? Like I'm just building a portfolio, not a portfolio, a collection of photos that when I make a reel, I can pick one that is the right spot of my house at the right time that is vertical and can be a good cover and can fit the text Mm -hmm. on it or whatever, right? Because I'm doing it every day or I'm putting something in the story. So I don't ever post a photo from a photographer and reflect it back on them, how it performs. It's so much more complicated than that. And if you're showing up every day and putting out good content consistently, you're going to win. And winning looks different to everyone, right? It's not necessarily having hundreds of thousands of followers. It's hopefully finding the right guests that you get to host in real life. But part of that is being yourself and seeing who resonates with that because those are your people. That's who you want to host. Mm-hmm. That's all good points. Guys, I wish we could talk forever because yeah. I feel like we could. We but could. I did just have two puppies show up at the house and I know my husband. Yeah. It's my fault. I was the one who signed up for them. So he's out there like, are you coming out to take care of yeah. these puppies or what are you doing? Yeah, But it was so good to see you again. I do want to give a quick plug and then I want both of you to share where you can be found. But we did another episode that was, I think, like two hours long on your podcast. Mm -hmm. So if folks liked the content of this, they can head over to your podcast and listen to that one. I also have just started listening to your podcast in general, and it's great. It's all photography stuff, but it's really good. So folks should check it out. Tell them where they can find you and what it's called. Uh, our show is the Photographer Mindset Podcast. Seth and I co-host it. It comes out uh, weekly on Mondays, Monday morning. Recently, we've just started a YouTube channel too, where we we put up our uh, videos uh, with the guests. Um, I would say sixty to seventy percent of the time we have guests. Uh, the rest of the time, Seth and I kind of pontificate on current issues in the in the field and. And yeah, that's, we talk about mindset of creators. We talk about photography, videography, and just sort of our experience on um, not letting the space get us down and, and staying strong and, and being creative. So and that's that's the little plug. Uh, we have a lot of fun on there. We goof around a bit, but we definitely get into some serious stuff and, and, and talk from our hearts. I love it. Yeah. And I'm going to link all of this below in the show notes, both on YouTube and on um, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, so you'll be able to find all that. But can you also quickly throw out your Instagrams? Because for any cabin mm-hmm. owners who want to see your work and hit you up, that's probably where they're going to start. Yeah, that's Seth Macy, at Seth Macy, and I'm um, uh, at Mantis underscore photography, Mantis underscore photography. Um, yeah, I'm in the New England area. Seth's just over the border in, in Canada, um, and we love... We'd love to talk with anyone. So hit us up. Awesome. This was such a treat. Thank you for taking the time and joining me. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much for joining us. And if you liked what you heard, feel free to leave us a five-star rating on Spotify or share some of your favorite parts over on Apple Podcast. 
If you have feedback or suggestions for the future, you can also find me on Instagram at Cozy Rock Cabin. Looking forward to next week.